I know folks, it's Ryan from Ryan's Beer Reviews and Tools, and I've got a beer to showcase today. I'll be reviewing, as you just saw earlier, from Lexington Brewing Company and Distillery. Uh, they have a distillery there. Vanilla Barrel, a cream ale. The biggest uh, brewery of beer that we have when I was younger, that I knew of, I didn't drink at the time, but it was uh, Croft Cream Ale. It always sounded nice or different cream ale uh, kind of like something that you like to try or have cream ale well anyway we got one here a vanilla cream ale from lexington brewing company and uh that's uh in kentucky yeah lexington kentucky brewing company in kentucky i got some information on this also uh this will be my uh last uh beer review for let me week and a half or so um, right now I'm doing an outside because we have a nice day an outside beer review we have a nice day today and I think I'd come out and do it uh, I do like doing them in the beer cave <laughs> or the man cave it's turned into a beer cave the man cave but I'm getting that all set up for uh, I want to do some uh, videos on tutorials of my uh, paracord making I've been doing that for a while and uh, I do have a couple of old ones I did that I'll probably, I don't know, edit and so forth and uh, post on YouTube. Uh, but I'm getting back into making them again and uh, I laid it low for a while. And usually in my me and K when I'm not being doing beer reviews, I like to sit down there and uh, it's quietly, it's in the corner of the house, situated away from everyone. Uh, my kids uh, hardly ever come, come by that way when they do come over to visit. Uh, but also, um, it's got a door and in, in, uh, a window. It's, it's, just, it's just right for me. I sit down there. I'll uh, do my paracord. I play my harmonica. I like playing my harmonica. And uh, the guitar. I play the guitar every so often. I hope to make another recording. I'm, not <laughs> I'm a, a lousy singer. My voice is terrible. And, uh, I, like, I enjoy it. It's fun. As long as you're having fun in life, it puts a smile on your face. It makes you happy. That's nice. So, uh, We'll do this beer review. I'll stop talking. We'll do this beer review. I do have a Washington National hat on in recognition that they won the World Series. This is one of the kids' hats. Uh, I don't know when my son's uh, hat gets a little bit smaller. <laughs> but uh, I throw it on. All right, uh, let's get with the beer review. No further going on. Like I said, you saw that earlier. Uh, Kentucky Vanilla Barrel Cream Ale. Now, there are other cream ales around. And uh, I'm not really uh, buying them as a drinking thing, but um, I will do it for uh, a beer review. I do like the bottles of the Embossum with their uh, company logo or something like that. And uh, that, that's nice. Show some pride in their, their, their business. All right, uh, let's see. We got, uh, I do have, uh, <laughs> I'm going to do a hot pepper today. Uh, I'm getting acclimated to them. I remember I went to my number eight or hot peppers. My my oldest son, uh, he uh, ate hot peppers and more so not hot peppers, but hot sauces and so forth and all hot things like that. And I never did because I just never liked hot stuff. And uh, that, that, that looks like a, a hot one there. I've been batting a thousand on peppers that are supposed to be hot, not that bad. Okay, I'll do less talk. I go on these tangents. So I've got to be uh, <laughs> leery of, of that because I just go on off on things. All right, uh, this Kentucky Vanilla Barrel Cream Ale is a 5.5% alcohol by volume. has 18 international bitter units. And I'm going to explain that a little further. I know a lot of you guys and some gal out there understand what international bitter units are. They're uh, the bitterness in your beer. But I'm going to give some examples of... Uh, what it really breaks down to. I mean, it comes from the hops, and uh, some of the hops that are really big in, into the hops that give out a lot of alpha acids in uh, Chinook, Galena, Horizon, Tomahawk. There's a lot of those that give out more alpha acid, or, or, or will give more bitterness in your beer. When you're brewing a beer, you want it to be either a, a sweeter beer, 
so you go low on, on the hops and more so on the malt which malt sometimes a lot of sweetness impounds on it because malt is sugar and the yeast eats up the, the sugar in the malt the sugarness and the byproduct of that is uh, alcohol and carbonation so, so the, the yeast is burping and doing a pee, 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 pee in <laughs> alcohol, he's peeing on alcohol. All right, uh, let's see. Where am I at? Oh, yeah, I was gonna explain what um, some examples of the international bid unit, and I do have them here. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty neat to know what, when you go buy a beer and you see the, the ABV on it, the percentage of alcohol, and also that they'll have IBU on it. And that'll tell you how bitter the beer is. Okay, let's see. We got like an American regular lager beer, like uh, Narragansett, a Budweiser, Coors. Um, any of those big beers in the Genesee, uh, or any of the lager beers are roughly 8 to 26 international videos. And 26 would be kind of high on lager. But with the advent of all these craft brews and so forth, uh, it's brought it up because normally it would be from 8 to maybe 15, 16, 17 at the most. But this goes, they sent 26 now because of the advent of what's going into the beers. A wheat beer would be uh, 8 to 18. That'd be your wheat beers. On Lambic is a lot of the sweet. You see, they have cherries in it, a lot of the, the French, uh, European, uh, Portugal. Uh, uh, Germany, they have the Lambic beers. Those go from 0 to 18 on the international bitter units. So you're going to get a lot more sweetness in your beer with that. A pale, a pale ale, that's 30 to 50. So being it's pale, it's got a lot more bitterness in it. It's not an IPA, but it's got more bitterness, but it's got more types of malt that balance that out. Okay, an Indian pale ale. We all know the IPA, the big right now, and they should be because they're really tasty brews. Uh, they go from 40 to 120 international bid units. Those are way up there. Uh, I said that all comes from the bit of the alpha and the beta acids coming out and of the hops. And if you've got a good brewmaster, he knows how to balance it out and how to use, use them correctly. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, what they're saying on this here, this is a, a perfect blend of vanilla and bourbon. This is a year-round brew. Uh, they took a cold condition and uh, one of these basically a cream ale, a cold condition, which is when it's cold condition, it's 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 a bottom fermented, it's a lager beer, and there was uh, ales at top fermented. And you don't need the cold condition and the cold as much. Uh, already, and, uh, so basically, they took a cold condition cream ale and they brewed it with uh, a hint of flake corn and bourbon vanilla beans. So that sounds pretty good. So that's where the vanilla is. The vanilla beans are in this here when they're, when they're uh, brewing it. Uh, hints of flake corn and vanilla, bourbon vanilla beans and it's aged in freshly decanted bourbon barrels for at least six weeks. So they've just emptied the barrels of the bourbon that some uh, distillery has. Maybe this distillery here, maybe they have their own because there's a distillery, this company, uh, Lexington Brewing and Distillery, and then as soon as the can is it's empty, and the thing, it's uh, filled with uh, the beer. So it in embeds some of the bourbonness in the beer. Well, we'll have to see what this is going to be like. Uh, what they've used in this on the fires of the hops, they've only used one hop, a centennial hop in this. Huh, I'm really uh, surprised, but. Uh, this ale has a centennial hop, one hop, hmm, centennial hop, but the malts, they've got two row pale malt, um, Munich 10, a crystal 60, I'm not that familiar with the crystal, uh, biscuit malt, uh, flake maize, maize corn, dried corn, I would think. Uh, that biscuit malt, that basically is a, a lightly roasted malt, lightly roasted. You're not going to get the impact of darkness in the beer or, or the roasted flavor in some of the beers that you get. So, Alright, let's uh, no further ado. Let's see what we got here and uh, nothing here. Let's open it up. Uh, I've been doing a lot of talking. 
a Budweiser. Okay. It's the brew. Okay, we got it open. Uh, all right, we got a glass. Yeah. We used a, <laughs> a Budweiser opener. And now we've got a Budweiser glass. <laughs> all right. That's a good thing. All right, without further ado, I like the color. It's a strong. On the SNRM scale, that would be, do I have anything on here? They don't say anything on there. That would be um, probably six, five. No, that'd be too dark. Four on the SRM scale. A lot of combination in that. Nice head on it. I'm getting some some aromas like toffee. Oh, yeah, the, the barrels come right out. The bourbon barrels and sweetness. It's toffee. I'm getting a toffee, like a toffee aroma. Some graininess, uh, coffee. The sun's moving to the west there. It's directly like facing right now to our eyes. Um, it's, it's probably about uh, three o'clock now. Four. Get stuck early now. Uh, chocolate. A bit of bit of chocolate. But um, some some sweetness to it. Definitely vanilla. Something like a, a fruitiness, sweet fruit. A bit of a sour, like a, a sour, like not doughy bread sour, but a. Alright, further ado, bottoms up. Cheers. Mmm, that's flavorful. Mmm, medium to a full body. Mmm. Oh, that is good. This is delicious. You can sit down and uh, what is it? it's 5.5% ABV. It's not high. This would be a good session to be where you could sit down with your family or friends doing something where you're not going to get the plaster to him. Mm. Wow. It's, it, it has a flavor. You do pick up at first on the, the uh, bourbon barrel that uh, this had been sitting in. Uh, they don't give the length of how long it. Uh, sits in the barrels, but I just noticed this is probably about uh, a six on the SRM scale, a seven uh, on the SRM scale. I just saw, saw it here. I put it down earlier. Uh, a little bit of a honey, honey kind of flavor. You get that Definitely, the bourbon from the barrel is definitely within twined and bedded in the flavor on this here. I'm really not picking up any bitterness for uh, 18 international beer, but then that's low. That's a good thing for this beer. Kind of like a I would say not milky, creamy texture of flavor at the same time going over your tongue. That is different. That is a different type of uh, ale. That's a nice ale. It's really good. They've they've brewed it well. They've come. Com <laughs> I get my mouth working. The complexity of it. Uh, makes it a good beer. 
So would I get this again? Yes, I would. I would get that again. They have other flavors. Uh, about five other different ones. Uh, coffee being another one. So it might have been coffee barrels. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely I'd get this again. Definitely. Okay. Now, I've got water. Uh, I've been uh, hitting the peppers here. And uh, I don't mind. They're, they're flavorful. The hot peppers, if you can stand a little bit of the burn on the tongue in your mouth, they're flavorful. They've got a nice flavor to them. Uh, I say, my oldest son kind of introduced me to eating hot stuff. I never have, but, um, but anyways, here we go. <laughs> right away, burn him. You can see earlier with name of this pepper is the Scoville's uh sorry to talk in my mouth for mm. I like the flavor. It's hot. Mm. Hot pepper. It's a nice day today here in Massachusetts. <laughs> So I'm out in the yard working. And it was time for a beer review. Time for a beer. Or an eel. It's burning. Not a heck of a lot. Those are on the sides of my mouth. Mm. Well, if I don't like the seeds. There you go. You know, I'm getting acclimated to the hot. So maybe it's harder than I think. It is burning in front of my tongue a little, inside my mouth. But the flavor is good. I say peppers are good for you. All right, <clears throat> I'll wrap this up. Have a good day, folks. I won't be doing another beer review for a while, or like maybe a little over a week and a half or a week and a half. So, that's it. Have a good day. Go drink, drink responsibly. Don't drive. If you're in the rage of drinking it, age, don't drink. But you get to drinking age.